Deadlock can be a tricky problem to work with because it only occurs under certain very specific conditions. But when it does occur, it can be a huge hit on our performance. Before we get into deadlock, let's review um, a few tools that we use to deal with competing processes competing for the same resources. The first is a mutex lock or a mutual exclusion lock. Just as the name says, it only allows one process to use um, a resource at a time. Another tool available to us is the semiphore. Semiphores um, can be configured like a mutex lock with either um, it's available or it's not in a binary configuration, or there are counting semiphores with an integer that can count down with resources. So say there's five resources available. As processes come and ask for those resources, they can count down and then tell the sixth process that there's nothing available. Semiphores, um, the concept of semiphores was given to us by Dr. Dykstra. Dr. Dykstra also gave me my favorite computer expression, which is spaghetti code. Spaghetti code means code that is very poorly structured, not apparently going anywhere. Dr. Dykstra also gave us a great thought exercise for understanding deadlock, and it's called the dining philosopher's problem. So let's try and visualize philosophers at a table. Now the philosophers can either think or eat. And the philosophers um, are oblivious to each other. They don't know what's going on with the other philosophers. When a philosopher gets hungry, it first acquires the chopstick to its left. Once it's got that chopstick, then it acquires the chopstick to its right. The philosopher can now eat the rice. When the philosopher is full, it can release the chopsticks because it no longer needs them. And this works well with a single philosopher, but what if we have five philosophers around the same table? This might work well for some time, but that one instance when we have all the philosophers getting hungry at the same time and they all go for their left chopstick. And when they go to acquire their right chopstick, Someone's already acquired it. And they're stuck. They can't move on to the next state. So this will hopefully help you visualize the four necessary conditions for deadlock to occur. The first is mutual exclusion, meaning that only one process can use the resource at a time. Hold and wait. The process must have acquired one resource and be waiting to grab the next resource. No preemption, meaning that um, a process can't force another process to release a resource. And then circular wait. There must be a circular chain of more than one process, like is illustrated with the dining philosophers. All four are necessary for a deadlock to occur. Think about that as you go forward. All right, I think that takes care of it for this session. So I hope you found this useful.